Questions 52 to 54 in the ASA Green paper. Question 52. In the muscle capillaries of a man, while the oxygen partial pressure is 40 millimeters of mercury and the hemoglobin saturation is 62%, of the following figure one suggests that this man was most likely A. So essentially you take those two values, 40 millimeters of mercury and the hemoglobin saturation is 62%, and you match that up with the figure in figure one. Um, so if we do that, we essentially will find ourselves on a point on line four. So if you match up that 40 oxygen partial pressure on the x-axis and the 62 on the y-axis, and you figure out the point that is the intersection of those two lines, well, you'll get line a uh, point on line four. So line four corresponds to a sheep. Um, and you'll notice that the answers A, B, C, and D in question 52, none of them have an animal that is actually in that key in figure one. So we've basically got to find an analogous animal, an animal that's basically this, a similar size to that of a sheep. So um, of A, B, C, and D, B is the most similar, as in a wolf is the most similar size to a sheep out of those four animals. So therefore, B is the correct answer for question 52. Question 53 of the following figure one is most consistent with the fact that in general, smaller mammals have. Um, so the correct answer for 53 is B, a more rapid metabolic rate than do large animals. So there's two reasons for that. One is indeed smaller mammals do in have a more rapid metabolic rate than large animals. For example, babies often have a heart rate that is very fast at around 140 beats per minute. So you, as you get older sort of and larger, your heart rate goes down by a lot. Um, to around 60 slash 100 for an adult human. So basically, smaller mammals will in, have a much more rapid metabolic rate. Uh, a figure one shows this. So when we go from um, the left to the right uh, line, basically from line one to line eight, we go from a much larger animal, so line one is an elephant, to much smaller animals on the right. Um, such as line eight, which is a mouse. So when we go from line one to line eight, the size of our animals is decreasing. And if you're familiar with oxygen saturation curves, a right shifted curve will involve increased offloading of oxygen by our hemoglobin molecules. So when we go from left to right, we are not only um, decreasing the size of our animals, but also increasing our ability to offload oxygen which is very important if you're an animal that has a very high metabolic rate as uh, you need a lot of oxygen to be offloaded nice and quickly so that you can keep up with your metabolic demand. So therefore, B is the correct answer for question 53. Question 54. The sigmoid shape of the oxygen dissociation curve indicates that when a fully saturated hemoglobin molecule loses oxygen from one subunit, um, it, C, it becomes easier to lose the second and third oxygen molecule. So that's the correct answer, C. And the reason for that is because, so I've drawn out this sort of uh, graph. It's it's not a true uh, oxygen dissociation curve. I've just sort of drawn it out for illustration purposes. But basically, at these really high oxygen partial pressure um, points in the graph, we have a relatively horizontal graph, i.e. our gradient is fairly um is fairly close to zero, it's unchanging. So basically, above a certain oxygen partial pressure, in this case, just for um, argument's sake, we'll say like about 80, 80 and above, uh, uh, hemoglobin saturation will be consistent around 100%. <clears throat> but under this point, under say 80 um, millimeters of mercury, our oxygen pa uh, partial uh, sorry, our hemoglobin saturation rapidly drops off. So we're not changing our oxygen partial pressure by a lot, but our hemoglobin saturation um, just drops off really, really quickly. And then again, when we get to these low oxygen partial pressures, we have this sort of horizontal point where it's a bit, it's pretty much unchanging um, in regards to the oxygen, so the hemoglobin saturation. So the only way that our graph has this S sigmoid shape is if we have this all or nothing response whereby when we lose one oxygen molecule from our hemoglobin, we'll lose the second and third oxygen molecules more readily. And that's because 
Um, at these high oxygen partial pressure points in the uh, graph slash hemoglobin, we are holding on to our oxygen. We're, we're really um, not allowing it to escape. But when we reach this uh, tipping point, we suddenly just rapidly lose all of our oxygen um, at once until we get to again another stable point at, at the other extreme end of oxygen partial pressure. If losing one oxygen from the subunit of hemoglobin had no effect on how easy it is to lose the second and third oxygen molecules, we'd expect a much more linear graph whereby the hemoglobin saturation is much more um, in proportion to the uh, oxygen partial pressure. But since this is not the case, since we have this all or nothing response, the correct answer for question 54 is C.